fertilization the meaning of fertilization as you all are aware it is the fusion of the male and the female gametes resulting in the formation of a diploid cell which is called a zygote now depending upon the site of fertilization where exactly does fertilization happen if it happens outside the body of the parent in the surrounding medium it is called it is called external fertilization if it happens within the body of an animal it is called internal fertilization some of the examples for external fertilization include echinoderms and bony fishes as well as amphibians internal fertilization is mostly an adaptation that is seen in land animals because the outside environment is dry so fertilization cannot happen outside the body so inside the body the process of fertilization happens in case of vertebrates cartilaginous fishes also exhibit internal fertilization some of the bony fishes may exhibit internal fertilization and when we mention vertebrates we are mostly talking about reptiles birds and mammals also the source of gametes depending on the source of gametes if both the gametes that is the male and the female gamete originate from the same parental body then we call it as self fertilization which is seen in hermaphrodites like tapeworm or tinea if the source of gametes is not the same parent that is if the sperm is derived from one parent and if the egg is originating from another parent then we call it as cross fertilization however it is very important to know that even hermaphroditic organisms can resort to cross fertilization why do they resort to cross fertilization so even though they are capable of producing both the sperm and the egg they always ensure cross fertilization takes place because always when the gametes are obtained from two different sources there is a chance to create variations in the offsprings so variations are generated in the offsprings and the offsprings can better adapt to the surrounding environment or the surrounding conditions how do hermaphroditic organ organisms or bisexual organisms or monoecious animals exhibit cross fertilization by carrying out or by exhibiting protandry and protogyny in protandry what happens is even though an animal is bisexual that is uh, the male reproductive system matures first and the female reproductive system matures later like in the case of leech and earthworm in protogyny what happens is the female reproductive system matures first and the male reproductive system matures later so if you notice the male and the female reproductive systems within the same organism do not mature at the same time there is no synchrony in the maturation of the male and the female parts so either the male reproductive system matures first in the case of protandry or the female reproductive system matures first in the case of protogyny what is breeding behavior breeding behavior is whether the organism lays eggs or whether it gives birth to live young ones now based on that we have egg laying organisms we call this condition as oviparity and then if fertilization mostly happens inside the body the young one the zygote and the subsequent embryonic development happens within the parent body within the mother's body and the young one takes live birth and that is in the case of viviparous organisms in ovo viviparity which is somewhat a mix of both that is seen in some snakes such as vipers what happens is the mother does produce an egg but the egg is retained within the mother's body and the egg hatches inside the mother's body and the young one crawls out of the mother's body so it appears as if the young one is taking birth but actually the egg it actually came out of a, uh, the hatching of an egg which was retained within the mother's body so this kind of uh, situation or this condition in which the female produces an egg but she does not lay the egg to the outside she retains the egg in her reproductive tract and the young one hatches out of the egg so it appears as if it is viviparous but in reality it is ovo viviparous what about development now usually what happens once the egg develops and the egg hatches immediately the organism that comes out of the egg cannot immediately become an adult so there should be some kind of an intermediate stages so in case of a type of development that is called indirect development the young one that hatches out of the egg is referred to as a larva the best example for larva is the tadpole larva or the caterpillar larva and then the larva undergoes drastic changes 
or transformation a process that is called metamorphosis in order to become an adult this kind of development where a young one which does not resemble the adult please remember we call a young one as a larva because it is very distinct in its appearance it is not similar to the adult in its physiology in its anatomy in its morphology lot of changes are there it does not resemble the adult such a young one which does not resemble the adult is called a larva so in case of indirect development the egg hatches out into a larva and the larva gradually undergoes transformation or metamorphosis to become an adult what about direct development in case of direct development the egg directly there is no larval stage over here the egg hatches out into a young one such a young one may be considered to be as a nymph like for example if you take humans for example now we don't say human humans have a larval stage isn't it now as soon as the baby is uh, the baby uh, takes birth from the mother's womb it is simply a young one it it resembles the adult and then it grows in its body size its body proportions increase its mass increases and as a result it later becomes an adult so there is no larval stage at all this kind of development where larval stage is completely absent is called direct development now here they have given the example of cockroach now cockroach is not an apt example for uh, direct development so we will just say that the egg gives rise to a young one the young one becomes an adult you can take any other example you can take a lizard for example or a crocodile for example or a bird or a mammal if you say a bird hatches out of its egg and the young one is called as a chick and that is very similar to the adult so we cannot call it as a larva so the egg hatches out into the young one which is not a larva which resembles the adult and the young one transforms gradually by gaining its body mass and its body proportions increase in the their size and then ultimately it becomes sexually mature and then it becomes an adult so what is metamorphosis i told you where a larva becomes an adult there are lot of changes that are involved suppose the changes are progressive as in certain new structures are added to the larva during its metamorphosis then we call it as progressive metamorphosis suppose there is a structure in the larva which is lost in the adult i'm giving you a very simple example if you take a tadpole that pole of a frog has a tail it can swim in the water but the adult frog does not have a tail so when a structure is lost during metamorphosis we call such a type of metamorphosis as retrogressive metamorphosis okay